Hi everybody, Neil Kravitz here. For this clinical pearl, I wanna share how I treat a class three malocclusion. Now I understand that my approach may be different from others. I never like to teach as if my way is the correct way or the only way, but I do like to share my own personal experiences, my own mishaps, and perhaps that can help another orthodontist along their journey. Now, traditionally, we are taught to treat a deficient maxilla early, but treat a prognathic mandible late. Now, what does that mean? If the lower jaw is growing fast, there's nothing we can do to slow it down. Chin cups will not work. So we wanna see where it is and decide, can we camouflage it with lower bicuspid extractions or does the patient need orthognathic surgery? But we do think that we have some ability to manipulate a deficient maxilla with protraction face mask therapy. My feeling is that protraction face mask therapy is minimally effective at best. And I use it very uh, judiciously and sparingly in my practice, but I do have a pearl with its use. Now, a lot of orthodontists will use protraction face mask therapy very early, ages seven, maybe even six or five years old. But one of the problems that can happen with protraction face mask therapy is if you are not advancing the incisor simultaneously while you are protracting the maxilla, you can push the buccal segments of the maxilla into the path of the erupting canines. And remember, a deficient maxilla will often have labially displaced canines right on top of the roots of the lateral incisors. So if you're protracting those buccal segments, you're further impacting the canine. Now the canine's gonna resorb the roots of the lateral incisors. And here you are again with an upper extraction case, which is gonna require a Lefort surgery to correct it. So the pearl here is that if you are gonna do protraction face mask therapy, you also need to advance the incisors to preserve that canine space. Now, those who have heard me speak before know that I like to try to minimize the use of brackets in the first phase. So when I do protraction face mask therapy, I don't do it at six, seven, or even eight. I like to do it closer to nine. I like to expand early. I'll expand at seven or eight. I'll take out C and H, but I wanna wait for those canines to erupt into that funnel between the lateral and the premolar. And once that canine is past that danger zone, which is the top third or the top half root of that lateral incisor. Once it's past that area that frequently resorbs, then I feel like I can go with heavy protraction face mask and, and see if I can get some positive overjet. So in my office, I don't do a lot of protraction face mask, but when I do do it, I want to make sure that that canine is in a safe spot within that funnel to make sure that I am not impacting the canine during protraction. And uh, if you want to start it early, no problem, but make sure to advance those incisors while you are protracting the maxilla. I actually prefer using a bonded expander for my protraction face mask. But I want to add one last pearl here. We need to be honest during the consultations. And sometimes we give the parents false hope or we're kind of um, gray with our diagnosis. And I think parents who are eager to avoid orthognathic surgery, maybe they had a parent uh, or a family member also require surgery. So they're looking for a doctor who can tell them the news that they want to hear, which is we can do it without surgery. But I think it's very important to be very candid during these consultations. So I will tell a parent, listen, this is a surgical case. I really believe it is. And if we do treatment now, we're simply going to burn the patient out. And I need them to be motivated when we want to make that decision around age 14. But a lot of times we say things that are partially correct. We'll say things like, if we do protraction face mask therapy, we can avoid uh, orthognathic surgery. That's not that's not true. That We shouldn't say stuff like that. We'll say comments like, if we do expansion now, that will minimize and simplify the surgery later. That's, that's not true either. So we shouldn't really be saying that. I think um, you should only be doing protraction face mask if you believe you'll be able to achieve positive overjet. And I think ethically, if you feel you can maintain positive overjet, okay, which is why I don't do a lot of protraction face mask. And I think you need to be very candid in the consult. If you believe that child is going to be a surgical case, tell the parent, listen, trying to treat a surgical patient non-surgically is a potential for a lot of harm. And the best way to treat this is to talk about it, to discuss it, to make sure we have a proper treatment plan. And if you don't want to do surgery, it's okay. You don't need to do surgery. But trying to do non-surgical treatment on a surgical patient could potentially cause a lot of iatrogenic harm. So I hope you enjoyed this pearl. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to this channel. Thank you for supporting the JCO.